Hey, 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 it's Chappie's Crypto here with the next video in my Futures 101 series. This video will go through a really basic understanding of how a futures trade actually works and how you can calculate profit and loss and a really basic understanding how the actual, when people place trades in the futures markets, how they actually, the whole mechanics of that actually works. So let's get straight into it. So first and foremost, I just wanted to recap, these are the three different types of futures contracts that I've been covering in the 101 series. I'm going to focus this first little section on the NQ or the NASDAQ, and it will be the E-mini contract we're going to use as the example. So remembering there's three different types of contracts that we're looking at in this particular series, the NASDAQ, which is NQ, S&P, which is the ES, and the Dow, which is the YM. And these are the traits of each of these types of contracts. So the E-mini with these traits here, which shows you how the size value per point and the, ticks, and the tick value and the tick size and etc etc so we're going to focus on this particular uh, nq as as the example that we're going to use in the first first little section here so as an example if you have a look on the right hand side of this particular slide you'll notice here that i've got a price range so the thing that's interesting with futures as compared to stocks as an example if you're a trader and it, this is unique i suppose it's the same in stocks as well if you're a trader you don't really care too much what the price is today because what you're looking for is volatility so we want to see the price moving around so we can catch trades so, say for instance so we can get in a trade at this point and see it come up to here maybe get out at that point so the actual price of, of the of the future itself or the future contract itself is almost irrelevant well it's basically is irrelevant to be really honest in the context of a trade if you just want to get in and out as a day trader so the thing to understand and i've covered this in one of my previous uh, the 101 series but this just shows you in a bit of detail what it looks like on the chart so as an example the usually in trading view or any other charting packages you'll see the price if you zoom really zoom quite in far you'll actually see this is the price breakdown and so the minimum size or the size that minimum will be displayed on in your charts if you're looking at the nq e mini contract is a 0.75 difference or 0.25 difference between each price level so this is this is referred to as the ticker size so that's one tick from that level and you got marked it there so from there to there is one tick which if you look at the price it's an increase of 0.25 so that's the tick size the actual point is the values between things on the, on the left hand side so from here to here that's one point and the value of one contract and when you're trading futures you're actually purchasing or selling a number of contracts and that's the way it actually works you're not really caring too much about this because you're not buying something at 1375 and selling at 13075 what you are doing is you're buying one contract which controls you're buying control of one contract and if it moves this amount and you sell it again that's worth twenty dollars so one contract effectively with that level of movement is worth twenty dollars and if it's got if only moves by one tweak it's worth five dollars so i should just give you an example of what that looks like so as an example just say for instance this is what the candle would look like if the price is going up and say for say, say for instance we're going to buy one contract and we've for whatever reason we've been lucky enough to identify this is the point we wanted to get in at and so on our on the um on this particular one here we we purchased at this level we bought one contract at that price point so we bought one contract at 1307 4.5 and we're expecting price to move up now the candle moves the way we expect it to and then we actually ended up selling at that level there so we sold one contract at that point there so the whole time here all we're actually really risking is one contract so if the price started to retrace this direction each time it moved down what we're risking is five dollars a tick so each time it moves down we're risking that's five dollars risk it's ten dollars risk there so if it went and we cut the trade there we've lost ten dollars however this trade here say for instance we've bought one contract at that price and we sell one con sold one contract at that price what it's actually done is it's moved up one two three four five ticks or 1.25 points so that's how much price has moved and so how do we work out what profit we've made on that particular trade so you can actually if you take the top price and minus it away from the bottom price it shows you the difference which is 1.25 points or five ticks and to calculate your profit on that particular trade it's 1.25 points times twenty dollars and twenty dollars being the value of one contract as we've stipulated already and that's set by um, the exchanges effectively and that's that's the value of a contract or five ticks at five dollars a tick so the profit on that particular trade would have been $25 if we took one contract. What about if you take multiple contract contracts? It's essentially the same concept, but rather than you just times in that number and you'll see in a second what I mean by that. So it's the same price differential. So the, you know we've had the same movement here on this particular trade, but this time we actually decided to buy five, buy four contracts and we sold four contracts. And you'll actually see here the calculation then all, all, all you need to do is 
The point movement by the value of the contract by the number of contracts you're trading gives you the total profit you've made on that particular trade. Or if you want to calculate it by ticks, which you can do as well, five ticks times the tick value, which is $5, uh, times four equals $100. So over here, four contracts equaling $20 on, the, on, on a tick movement, or four contracts equals $80. So hopefully that makes sense on the NQE Mini. What about if you go the opposite direction? So the nice, one of the things that's really cool about the futures markets is that you can trade both ways. So it doesn't matter if the price is just going up. If you want to, if you suspect price is going to go this direction, you can actually take what's called a short trade. So those two trades I just showed you is an example of a long trade. A long just meaning that you're expecting price to go that direction. If you expect price to go the opposite direction, you take what's referred to as a short. So a short means rather than buy something, you're going to sell something. It's really confusing to understand that, particularly for people that are new to this space. And if you want to get some more understanding of short trading, you, there's, there's truckloads of stuff on the internet and YouTube explaining that. However, this is a really basic explanation. So the candles are typically red when you look at um, price movements moving down. So in this context, the price moved to this point, opened at this level for this candle, moved up a tick, and then it moved down, went right down to the bottom of this range, and then it closed that time frame or that candle at that point. So how would I take this trade if I was going to do a short? So I'd actually place an order to sell one contract at that price point. So rather than buy, we start off with selling. So we sell at this level, and then we buy it back, or we buy one at that, that level. So what, what that effectively means in your account, you'd actually have minus one contract at this point. And then when you buy one back, you'd go back to zero position. So you wouldn't be holding anything at that point. A little bit confusing, but trust me, it's, um, it's one of the really cool features of futures trading. The fact that it doesn't really matter which way the market moves, you can make money both ways. So a similar calculation as before, how do I work out um, the profit and loss on this? Well, on this particular instance, we've gone from this price to this price. Difference being 1.25 points again. Um, and how do I work out what I've made here? Well, we've got 1.25 times points times 20 equals $25, or we've got five ticks at $5, which equals $25 again, it's because once again, we're just calculating the difference from there to there. So it's exactly the same results as if we did a long, but the price has gone that direction. So that's, that's how a short works. What about multiple shorts? Well, guess what? It's exactly the same. You'd, it's the same calculation once again, but rather than just doing one contract, this time we're doing four. So the calculation here difference is only this. You don't have to calculate this stuff because your your trading platforms and trading view and your broker typically once you're using any of the um, tools to do this it does these calculations automatically but when i got started in this space i just i didn't really understand how this all worked so i just wanted to go into a bit of detail about that so that's where the way a short works at a really basic level what about if you use a different type of contract so that's the nq the difference between the nq and say the es is the value of the size of the point um, and you might ask yourself the question, well, why would people trade the micro over the e-mini? Well, part of the reason people sometimes will trade the micro is if they've got a small account size. And, and, what I, and if you have a look at here, so as we've discussed on the previous episode, the micro contracts are one-tenth the size of the e-mini contracts. So if I've got a small account, you might find that the micros are better to trade because it allows you to take a bit it allows you to um, deal with variances of price a bit more effectively. So we're going to just do a little example of what happens if you're trading the MES or the micro e-mini S&P contract. It's referred to as the MES. So the value per point on this is $5 and the tick size is $1.25. And this is just an example of the price range of the ES or the MES. So we've, the midpoint I've just identified here is 4,080 and each 0.25 increment or each tick is worth $1.25 if you're trading one contract. And if you move up a whole point, it's sometimes referred to as a handle as well. So that whole range there is referred to as one point, which is four ticks. And that, that's if you're trading one contract, that whole movement is equivalent to $5 in value. So what happens here if you're trading that? Similar sort of concept, if I'm gonna take a long trade, I place one contract order at this price level. So I buy one contract at that price and I wanna sell it at this price. So if I sell one contract at that price, what's the difference between those two? Well, we've same thing. We've got one, two, three, four, five ticks. So price has moved by five ticks from there to there. Five ticks is 1.25 points. So how do, what does that actually look like? Well, the price difference there is 1.25 points. That's how far the index has moved or five ticks. And how do I work out what I've made? Well, 1.25 times the contract value, which is five. So I've got 1.25 point movements 
times the value of one point, which is five dollars, it gives me the total profit for that particular price movement. And or five ticks times one one dollar twenty-five because each tick is worth a dollar twenty-five, which gives me six twenty-five. Um, so that's how the e-mini or the micro contract works. As you can see, the value is a lot less. Now the cool thing about this, and the thing I, I actually personally am trading the micro e-minis at the moment is if you're trading multiple contracts that allows you to take partial profits and get it in and out a little bit more effectively so here's an example and i apologize i haven't updated this to give you the exact right thing so here that actually should say five so i buy five contracts here and price moved up in this instance and i sell five contracts and same calculation before but the only difference is we're times it by five to give us a much larger obviously profit on that particular trade so just note that should say five and that would be five typically so why would you trade this well if i've only got if i only want to risk say fifty dollars on a trade i might go in this trade with five contracts and allow me if i get up to this point i might actually sell only three contracts at that level and leave a little bit in trade and leave two contracts to ride if i think the price may get, continue to go higher and so that's one advantage is of trading the micro if you've got a smaller account size what about if i take a short guess what exactly the same concept sell one contract at that level if this, this is where the candle opens say for instance we take a sell so we place an order with our broker of sell one contract at that price and then we buy one contract back so once again when we do this our account goes to minus one contracts and when i buy one back my my account balance goes back to zero contracts held and that's the calculation to work out how much money i would have made on that particular trade so i hope that makes sense um i just wanted to share some of these basic understandings of how the futures trading markets actually works and how you can calculate um, movements and prices and how there's a correlation between points and ticks and and the index price um, yeah so i hope that was enjoyable i'll look forward to making um, some more videos shortly this is just another example i used if you were selling five contracts on a short trade um, once again it's just demonstrating the fact that obviously with more contracts in, in your trades you're actually looking for making or losing more profit so in this example if i've sold five contracts at that level and price went against me and i decided to get out at that point i'm actually down by the value of one tick times five so if one ticks worth a dollar 25 here so if that moves there and that's a dollar 25 and i've got five contracts it's actually five times a dollar 25 to show me how much i would lose there so highly it's it, the futures market's really cool except for the fact that uh, you're working with substantial amounts of leverage because these price movements do price these movements to move fairly substantially depending on the time of the day that you're trading uh looking forward to giving you the next episode the next episode i'm going to look at managing risk and giving you some suggestions around how to work out position size so when you go to place a trade um, how big of a trade should you be going to the market with um, depending on how you want to manage your risk so hopefully that makes sense look forward to sharing the next video with you and until next time bye for now